the intestinal nematodes. The intestinal nematodes means the nematodes which are present in the intestine. These are the eggs. I made them rolling because these are the important things of intestinal helminthes. This is an adult worm of one type of intestinal nematodes as we'll see later. But it looks like a an alien or زي ما تكون وحشة فضائي أو حاجة زي كده بس ده فعلا البيكتشر بتاعتها لما شفناها بالإلكترو مايكروسكوب نيماتوتس is a good big category of worms which are non-segmented, cylindrical, tapered from both ends and covered by a subcuticle. Cuticle يعني حاجة جامدة محيطة بيها علشان تحمي النماتودز دي as most species are free living but some are parasitic. Sexes are separate, males are smaller than females and thinner than female. Reproductive system is tubular, means that there is a big tube beginning with the ovary, then the, ov uh, the ovigector, then the uterus, and then the vagina or the continuation of both uteri to end in the genital core of the female. Concerning the male, there is also tubular testes, then a bus deferens, then an ejaculatory duct, which opens in a cloaca in the posterior end of the male. So, the male genital tract ends in the cloaca, as I said, in the posterior end, it has external genital organs of two copulatory spicules. Sometimes male genitalia may have cuticular extension forming bursa. The female genital tract ends with a separate genital pore at the mid-body region. The digestive system is composed of oral and anal opening and it is complete and it has no, it has oesophagus, then intestine, then the anal opening in the posterior end. Buccal opening differs according to species, sometimes surrounded by two or three lips or it forms a buccal capsule with teeth inside in case of hookworms. This is a buccal opening with the lips around one, two, three lips. Here, this is one, this is two posterior, and this is the third lip around the oral opening here. This is the buccal capsule of hookworms with the teeth inside. This is of ankylostoma udinale, the human ankylostoma, with one pair of teeth on each side. Oesophagus also is used for differentiation of the types of nematodes because it is either cellular oesophagus as in case of trichuris and trichinella all this long and thin part is formed by the oesophagus which may be seen as one row of cells here 
in this part. There is also muscular esophagus, which is surround the esophageal glands are surrounded by muscles, and this is either rhabditiform esophagus. This is the picture of the rhabditiform esophagus with a little constriction in uh, behind the middle here. And next to it is the filariform esophagus, which is like the rhabditiform but longer and thinner. There is also double bulb esophagus, which ends here in a constriction. And widens again behind with a muscular tuft, which grinds the object eaten by the worm. So we call it double bulb esophagus because there is widening here and widening here. Last, we have the simple club shape Osophagus, which is present in many adult species of nematodes. It is like the club of baseball, and so we have it thin anteriorly here and wide posteriorly like this, and it is looking like the baseball club, so they call it club-shaped esophagus. Development of nematodes begins with the eggs. The eggs give three larval stages which may be present inside the egg or outside the egg when the egg hatches early. These three larval molds or stages end with the juvenile stage or the fourth stage, then the adult stage. Every one of these stages, there is molting. Molting means taking off the cuticle and building another cuticle for the longer and bigger stage. Uh, the third stage larva is the infective stage and it has filariform esophagus, so they call it filariform larva. Earlier stages have rhabditiform esophagus, so they call rhabditiform larvae. Nematodes are classified according to the final habitat into intestinal nematodes, where final habitat is the intestinal tract, and tissue nematodes, which need an arthropod vector for transmission and development to, of larval stages to infective stages. Also, we have the larval nematodes of animals which parasitize human tissue. These are the nematodes which we study in this section. The intestinal nematodes. Intestinal nematodes will begin with Ascaris lambricoides, heya kibira al muhtarama fiyum. عشان كده هنبدا بيها it is a large intestinal nematode present all over the world in temperate and hot climate ascaris of pigs also can infect humans but human ascaris doesn't infect pigs take this note with you adult worm is creamy white 
females reach about 40 centimeter in length while males reach about 25 centimeter in length they are more slender and have curved posterior end this is a characteristic of the male but the female has slender long posterior end here are the female and the male ascaris with the curved posterior end here and this is a ruler of 30 centimeters to see the difference between male and female life cycle of ascaris here is its diagram with the male and female ascaris here this is the female and this is the male ascaris we'll find them in the small intestine the female produces many many eggs so some eggs can be unfertilized large and they have only amorphous material inside and this is the fertilized egg smaller somewhat ovoid and has an one cell stage one cell stage embryo inside when the eggs are voided with feces they mature in soil outside they need some warmth and some humidity to mature so they mature into the two stage embryo the morula stage then we have here the infective stage which is the larvated egg within one month nearly if man swallows the larvated egg during eating soil vegetables or um, by means of flies whatever the egg hatches in the small intestine and then a larva comes out it penetrates the intestine passes with circulation to reach the lung in the lung alveoli they penetrate the lung alveoli and also with the increase of oxygen they have with the increase of oxygen inside the alveoli they have their third mold to transform into juveniles these juveniles crawl at, uh, uh, along the bronchial tree to reach the bronchi pass upwards to reach the pharynx and then they are swallowed again through the esophagus stomach to reach the intestine and grow into other this is the life cycle of ascaris it is compound life cycle needs migration of the third stage larva to reach the lung and then return again to intestine so it is one of the migratory life cycles of nematodes as i said the eggs pass from anus with the first cell stage embryo uh, it develops into the infective larva inside the eggs within two to three weeks in hot climate infection occurs by swallowing the embryonated eggs they hatch in intestine and the larva penetrates duodenum to reach the circulation and begin migration. Larvae reach the pulmonary capillaries to break into the alveolar cavity. In the lung alveoli, the larva molds and moves over the wall to reach the bronchiole, bronchus, and trachea, larynx, pharynx, oesophagus, to stomach to grow into adult in the duodenum. The pre-patent period from infection to egg finding in stools is about two months. 
The daily average egg production by a female Ascaris is about 200,000 eggs, so some of them may be unfertilized. Fertile eggs are oval, 60 by 40 micromillimeter, with thick wool covered with mammillated albuminous layer and contain one cell stage embryo while the unfertilized eggs are nearly double the size of the fertilized with the still the shell is thin and the albuminous layer is thin also because it is big and the content is amorphous without any embryo inside these are the embryonated egg and the unembryonated egg with it. Pathogenesis of Ascariasis. There is eosinophilia, especially during early migratory phase elicited by the worm because it causes also increase in immunoglobulin J and immunoglobulin E. This concerns there is eosinophilia, there is also allergic manifestation. The larvae can cause minute hemorrhage during breaking out of lung capillaries to reach the alveoli. Also, the adults can cause pathology by their ectopic extra-intestinal migration. The adult female doesn't settle in any place inside the intestine, as we'll see later. This is a histopathology picture of lung tissue, as you see here, and the larva present inside an inflammatory reaction around. This is the larva and the inflammatory reaction and exudates are surrounding it in lung tissue. Also, here is an adult Ascaris coming out of the liver after incision by a surgeon, and these are the intestine. This migrating adult Ascaris penetrated the liver tissue to go outside and made a big problem to the patient. Here is another patient with Ascaris worms coming out his nostril and mouth during anesthesia. Symptoms of Ascaris infection. Light infection doesn't cause any symptoms. White heavy infections and moderate infections can cause pneumonia during early larval migration called Loeffler's pneumonia with bronchial asthma-like manifestations, wheezes, expectoration, and low-grade fever. In case of adult Ascaris migration, the female may migrate from duodenum to lodge in bile duct, in the gallbladder, or in the liver. They also may pass through the stomach upwards to the esophagus to be vomited or they may crawl to the trachea or to the eustachia tube, making problems there. They also may perforate the intestine or occlude the appendix or pass through the anus. This migration of the females makes the worm as ectopic parasite. If it is lodged in any place, other than intestine, we consider it an ectopic parasite. 
It is rare, but may be caused by drugs or fever or anesthesia. Heavy ascaris infection also can cause intestinal obstruction sometimes. This is a picture of intestinal obstruction by Ascaris worm. This is a heap of Ascaris worms coming out from one patient. This is also the picture of ectopic Ascaris in the liver as we know and we have seen before. Diagnosis of Ascaris, finding X in stool examination, we have said that it gives about 200,000 eggs per day, so X can be easily found in stool. Sometimes the adult female itself comes out with or without defecation or with vomitus, so the the natives or the ordinary people can say that this, this patient has snakes in his body. Dayman al Fallahin yulu in the Bitala Tabin Mim Batlu Aw Min Manahiru, whatever, but the Humma Biataburu in Nil Askaris Alashan he yaptib a snake like in looking like snakes and it is pinkish or whitish in color, they call it a snake. Blood film also can show high eosinophilia. During migration phase, Loeffler syndrome is sometimes confirmed by finding larvae in the sputum, and they call this case verminous pneumonia. Verminous means wormy pneumonia. Sonography and barium X-ray may show the adults in the intestine. Also, I can add that frequently the patient who has ascaris has hives or urticaria without any cause. We find that he is having urticaria and if we do stool analysis, we can find the Ascaris egg. This is the Ascaris egg in stool. <coughs> Sorry, this is an adult Ascaris in jar. In case of treatment, there are many treatments for Ascaris. Some of them are still used till now, but the main, <coughs> sorry, the main issue is it is better to treat Ascaris first if it is combined with other intestinal worm infection. This can prevent adult irritation and migration anywhere, making ectopic ascariasis or making some problem. This is very important. Then we give Mibendazole, which is the drug of choice, twice daily for three days for treatment of ascaris. Also, We'll have pyrantel pamuet or antelminth, which is given as a single dose without breakfast. Also, antipar, which is piprazine citrate, is given daily for two days. This is better for pregnant women. Also, surgical removal of worms if they are impacted in the bile or pancreatic duct or in the appendix. Intestinal obstruction is treated first by administration of piprazine, 
because it may cause anesthesia to the worms so they spread instead of they are occluding the intestine if no response occurs we can refer to it. The second common worm, which is also the most common worm of nematodes, is the Entrobius vermicularis. The Entrobius vermicularis, we call it Exuris, or the pinworm, the Danidabusea, which is the common name of this parasite. It is the most common helminth parasite, especially in children. It is spread which in common, uh, common in crowded areas. Morphology and life cycle of Entrobius. The male is small, about two by two millimeter, uh, two to five millimeter. The female is eight to 13 means it is about one centimeter by half centimeter. They are yellowish white in color. This is the picture of the female and male entrobius. This is the male with coiled posterior end, and this is the female with tapering posterior end. Female is characterized by long, thin, pointed tail. So they call it pinworm. The male has coiled posterior end. The male is not usually seen in stools or in the uh, swabs we, we have to do, but we commonly see the female. Anterior end has circular ex uh, extensions or expansions of the cuticle called cervical alley. They are not apparent here. And the oesophagus is double bulb. This is the life cycle of Entrobius vermicularis. It's a simple, direct life cycle. The adults are present in the large intestine, in the cecum and ascending colon usually. And the eggs are deposited outside the anus and they are swallowed again to the, the larval stages grow in the mucosa of small intestine and then the adults come out and settle in the large intestine. Adult worms inhabit the cecum, part of ascending colon and lower ileum. The gravid female migrates large intestine to pass outside the anus and deposit eggs. They crawl on the perineum and deposit the eggs, eventually die afterwards. This usually occurs by night. The eggs are transparent about 50 by 25 micromillimeter. They are fully embryonated when they are deposited and readily infected. They can survive outside the body for weeks. This is the egg of Entrobius vermicularis. We call it plano convex because one side is flattened and the other is convex. And it has here a fully grown larva inside. Infection can occur also in the same host, auto-infection, or in the same family by the infected patient himself. On swallowing embryonated eggs or, or their inhalation, because eggs also can be inhaled with clothing with, uh, with uh, ch changing of clothing or on the beddings or in, uh, uh, in uh, the air around, they hatch in the intestine.
the larval stages develop into in, in the intestinal mucosa move two times to reach adult. The pre-patent period is about six weeks, one and a half months. A type of auto-infection is described called retro-infection. The eggs in the perineum or around the anus can hatch and the larvae crawl into the anus to the intestine again. This is called retro-infection. Concerning pathogenesis of Entrobius vermicularis, the presence of females around the anus can produce pruritus eni, especially in the hypersensitive people. Attachment of adults to the mucosa can cause inflammatory worms. The adult worms also can enter the appendix and may cause appendicitis. Females can migrate into female vagina, uterus, and peritoneal cavity through fallopian tubes usually, causing granulomatous formation around the adults and eggs. This may cause chronic pelvic peritonitis. This is a picture of large intestine here and the adult introvias are present inside. Also, we have here, this is a case of appendicitis, cross-section of the appendix and cross-section of the worm. Here we can see the esophagus of the worm double bulbed esophagus here and this is a confirmation of the presence of entrobius vermicularis inside the appendix. Symptoms of infection. The main characteristic symptom is nocturnal pruritus in eye. This is due to migration of females around the anus. This may be severe in children causing insomnia. In small children, worms may enter urethra and vagina and cause inflammation, urethritis and vulvovaginitis of young females. Many adults also in, and in elder children, the symptoms sometimes are not present, but they grind teeth while sleeping because of the irritation of adults. So these are the main characteristic symptoms of introvious vermicularis. Diagnosis is somewhat difficult because it is not readily appearing in stool examination except in if there is diarrhea, we can find the adult females and adult males in stools, in diarrheic stools. But in formed stools, we cannot find the eggs or the adult. It is mainly by finding the characteristic eggs around the anus, and this is either by making what we call NIH swab or Graham Scotch cellotape swab. Other females may be recovered around the anus or in feces, especially in the stools, as I said. The eggs can be found in female urine occasionally if there is urethritis or vulvovaginitis. The best way to find the eggs is the cellophane tape swab because it is some we call it is more practical than the NIH swab. 
The NIH swab is a cellophane paper put around a swab stick and kept wet by saline inside the swab tube. The swab is applied around the anus and then shaken in saline and the saline is examined for X. But in case of the cellotape swab, it is just putting the cellotape on a slide after we can put it around the anus stuck to a tongue depressor. This, in this case, we can see the eggs and the adult under this cellotape swab, which is stuck on a glass slide. And this is so practical more than the NIH when the tube may be broken or the swab is not properly taken like this. It is more accurate, more easy, the Graham cellophane swab. Treatment, treatment of the whole family is recommended, especially in crowded areas. A single dose of pyrantel palm weight repeated after two weeks can be given, but also mebendazole, a single dose repeated after two weeks is also better and it is usually given to the infected people. Also, warm water enema is effective repeated after two weeks because it expels the adult females with it.